there's about two variations that he does with this. Talking about Lazy Lester and the Geico harmonica video, or commercial rather. And as the get go speaking, Lester's playing over him and disrupting him, interrupting him. And then it shows a goes to a cut of Lester and he's sitting here with the harp and he's just smiling like this. And you can see him on the front porch in like a rocking chair and he's tapping his foot when he plays. And what he's playing is basically a riff that's been around for a very long time but it falls into a category of being deceptively simple because I'll tell you I slowed it down to not half speed 25% speed this commercial using the YouTube speed you know adjustment and I'll tell you I played it more times than I can count not that I was getting it wrong but I wanted to get it absolutely perfect with all the blues tone subtleties especially that second part and the first part is it's based around lip person it's based around single notes but it's it's very very loose even on the blow notes he's not which is a four blow he's not particularly focused on, on that whole exclusively. Um, and even when he plays the two draw like I demonstrated, there's certain, you can tell his embouchure is set, is set up in a certain way to get a particular sound. It's not all, I want to say vanilla or by the books. But there's a lot to study by listening to that commercial or listening to my video because I feel I did nail it now. I made tons of shorts and they're already in shorts format. And so I'll upload those tomorrow. And I'll upload this video. I'm not sure how I'm going to put this together with all the shorts, but I'm going to put this together. As the next video, harmonica video, because someone commented today saying uh, I haven't been doing the harp videos. All I've been doing is the guitar videos. Well, I did a harp video recently, which was in all the shorts of harp, Mr. Cantrell. That was all harmonica shorts. Um, Mr. Cantrell's a Adam Gusso and a Mr. Satan song, original song. And I broke it down into sections and played that. And then before that, I did. I wanted to do one harmonica Christmas song and one harmonica uh, guitar Christmas. So I'd say that was pretty recent. And I went on the guitar spree because. I had to get this all sorted out. And if you want a little update on that before I do the official update, um, the repairman called me when I was at work when he had the guitar. And, and it was late at night. It was, well, it was late because it was pitch black outside. It gets pitch black at 4 p.m. And it was pouring rain. And he said, I have your guitar here, it's ready to go. This was an after three, a little after three, after I was getting my, my lunch, my free food at work. He said, you can come pick it up, but if you don't make it for five, I'm traveling for Christmas and I won't be back until Tuesday. And, uh, 
And so it left me very little time at all to figure out what I was going to do. And I was very impatient. I didn't want to wait. Just the idea of it sitting in his uh, shop during Christmas, you know, when I wanted to have it back. <laughs> I'm very impatient. And, um, and so I checked when I was at work what it would cost to Uber over there to East Hampton in this crazy holiday traffic. For some reason, when I was at work, it said $40. Now I walked to work. When I was at home and I checked, it was $15. I wasn't prepared to pay $40 combined with everything I spent on this guitar already. And by the way, I went to the bank and they said PayPal made a deposit of the amount after I bought it the first time and got a full refund. It looks like Reverb and PayPal and all that was legit this time. That had me very nervous. I would have been visiting the poor house if I bought it twice. And on a side note, there was another one of these guitars I was looking at. And I saw one of the sellers just just so happened to see them on Pawn Stars. And I, I may, uh, for a Fender bass, but I may say more about that later. Not that I'm buying it, but that ties into the story because I just so happen to see this blade. This, I don't want to say the name of it because someone will go and buy it as well. But it's this place, the guitar store, and apparently they have a tech that appeared on Pawn Stars. And I saw this name and I recognized it because I was studying all those listings with the LG two and three quarter. Oh, now where was I? The Uber and I went home and I checked in it. And then I wasn't prepared to spend forty dollars. But it when, when once I got home and I plugged it in, it, it said fifteen dollars, which is like a. 15 minute walk, $40 to $15. So I I said, I'm going to go. And I set up the Uber and I told the guy it was getting very close to the time of closing to close at five. I told him I'm coming over. And before he even responded, okay, I was in the car with this Uber guy. This is just this kid. And he was listening to his trap crap. And uh, I like rap, but I don't like trap, drill, crap, and whatever. But it was actually, this was the only time in my life where it was calming. I found that trap music very relaxing, and I was just listening to it. It was horrible weather. And, um, and then I got there to meet with the guy. Finally, in this big building. Um, he dropped me off around the back, and I, but this time I went through the back door, and I, I knocked, and he had this horrible cough. He was just coughing, and he said, we'll be right out. We're spraying nitrocellulose or something. I don't know. We're spraying a lacquer. And the guy was just hacking up a lung the whole time. But uh, nevertheless, we... And we eventually came out and no uh, I I had I negotiated with him a little because for the bridge re-glue he, he had said more than his the invoice was more expensive than he originally said for the bridge re-glue because despite the bridge already having been re-glued and replaced the ends were still lifting from the shop. And the guy at the shop said, this is what people at a guitar store tell you. Yeah, if it's just the corners, that's fine. No, it's not. Um, by the way, this whole video is on the key of C special 20, but um, it was just a little bit of the quietest of it.
the time on the screen with this regular camera. Well, I got with the guy. I was out of town. I still had my work clothes on. And then he started informing me about the repairs. Basically what it looks like, it was a center seam and it was beginning to separate. Well, he reinforced that, he fixed that, pleated it, which is a term I have recently learned. And on the, the hairline pit guard crack, he actually got hot hide glue inside of the crack. And he also repaired that from the inside as well. He did a bridge plate repair in addition to the re-glue and did something with maple. Um, making the string sit properly. Um, he kept the original strings that the shop gave me, which I liked. He kept the original setup, which I liked, which has very, very low action and isn't buzzing, but it has the proper break angle of the strings and so on. Um, So that's basically what he did. He did nothing to the finish, which is what you really want to do with a guitar repair. Um, and then I, so I paid him, it's ready to play. And I'm going to make a short saying, what does a vintage guitar smell like? Well, mine smells like an old library book or an old library. <laughs> but. No, it doesn't smell bad, and I've had guitars like the used, not vintage, but I've had used instruments from this uh, skateboard guy. And they smelled bad, they stunk up for a while, and those weren't vintage, they were just used pieces of crap. So this doesn't smell bad, and it, and it feels really nice to play, and sounds really cool. Down the line, I may replace the tuners. For similar, you know, tuners that aren't 60 years old or anything. For now, I'm going to give the vintage tuners a little chance, even if I gotta tune up between songs. I'll tell you the modern guitars like my Martin um, doesn't have the mojo maybe of it, but it, it stays in tune better. You can pick it up. And, you know, the next day, and, and it's fine, usually. But this guitar is, first of all, it has that multi-layered sunburst, where it's, it doesn't look bland. Um, it's kind of like emanating orange from the middle, rather than being a flat brown. And then when it's black, it's really black. Because um, the thing about these LG two three quarter models is they're made in a smaller amount compared to just the regular LG two, for example. And since it's a small body guitar with a reduced size scale, short scale. They were often give to kid, given to kids. LG stands for learn their guitar, right? And so not many of them are around in amazing shape. And even that, um, not many are around, period, because not that many were created. And they pop up here and there. And I kind of like having this one repaired because, you know, I brought it to a guy who's just really good and he makes it, he, he's, he makes his own guitars. Um, you know, I brought it to a guy I trust. He liked the guitar, I liked the guitar. Um, you know, it's a very cool looking instrument very, very eye-catching. Um, I like the look of it when I'm playing it. 
uh, you won't find another one quite like it because the bridge has been replaced for a Brazilian rosewood, which it was already Brazilian rosewood, but this is a different bridge, a different Brazilian rosewood bridge. Now since I got it re-glued, it's flat and it's nicely positioned and he, he even cleaned up the sloppy glue work from the previous re-glue. He cleaned it right up and um, you know, as best as you could do and then re-glued it again. Took care of the cracks on the top. Um, so the thing's got a ton and ton of mojo going. It's one of those vintage guitars where it tells a story even if you don't know the, the, the whole story of it. And I got a story to tell with it. Because if you haven't seen the part one, oh, this wasn't supposed to be part two. This is supposed to be about Geico. But if you haven't seen the part one, that's about, um, maybe this will be the unofficial part two. But the part one is all about how this started out with downtown sounds and how I saw this model guitar downtown sounds and then and it was so rare to see it there and it just left an imprint on me and I this was around the time I bought the 018 so I couldn't just buy another guitar that cost even a little more than a, a brand new 018 and all the, between then and now I've learned so much about this model and I even learned so much about just how rare it was to have one in excellent condition at downtown sound so rare would that also had the deep sunburst and by that I mean um, like the bottom of it was all black the shoulders of the guitar were all black like it wasn't mostly orange it was a dark sunburst and um and that one was listed at a surprisingly low price on consignment with the original alligator case too. But I'm not going to reiterate that whole story. But the part two, basically, I got my guitar back now. I bought a 1950s guitar and I had to have it repaired. Not 1950s, 1950. And I got it repaired by the best guy that I know to do it. Uh, and it was one hell of a journey. But now I'm prepared to make videos of it. With it. With the title, Gibson LG 2 3 quarter. And I don't care if they get one view or whatever. Um, it's the guitar I wanted. And I've never been like possessed to buy a certain model like that before. There's never been a model guitar where I said I have to have this. I'm just it's a so the whole series of stories that starting with downtown sounds and how I shared it on Facebook and someone bought it. And then I began learning about them. If you wanted to go buy one of these right now and many of them have been sitting there. There's about maybe eight listings. For example, there's one at Sam Ash. There's one at this place from the Pawn Stars that I got my eye on, so I'm not going to say. There's another one from this guy, Gary's Classic Guitars, that sells vintage, almost exclusively Gibsons and Marins. And he's kind of reminiscent of Norman Greer Guitars, but... I think he does it all out of his house. There's another one, Bernie, which had an ugly headstock and an ugly sunburst. And uh, a Bernie had a sad story too about how he passed away. I've been, this whole guitar journey has been going on for like, I don't know how long I have to check in terms of this particular one guitar. But anyway, there's only like eight 
so that you can buy if you sell right now. And you can go on eBay and maybe find one more out in Japan or something. Overall, there's not that many physically if you have the funds for it that you can buy, have shipped to you. Um, and so, you know, I, I just picked one. But I picked the one that spoke to me and then later on I realized that you can go on Reverb and you can look at all the sold listings from a place. I didn't know that. I thought once something sold on Reverb, it disappeared and you couldn't see it anymore. But that's not the case. You can actually look up sold listings and that's what I did for Downtown Sounds and I found it. And I began comparing it to mine. Noticing that the, the play wear around the sound hole was similar. And there's another one that had a similar thing like that going on too, another 1950. I noticed that the sunburst was similarly dark. Although mine was much more orange and downtown sounds was more greenish, more dull looking. And it was kind of nice looking too, very unique. The one in downtown sounds had a brighter pickguard, had the original bridge, but it looked like the pins were replaced. Um, yeah, it was very, it was very cool. If I got the chance to buy it again, I probably would go downtown sounds. But um, comparing it now to mine, you know, mine didn't need the neck reset. Like that guy, Gary's. Gary's had the bright orange sunburst, which was not a dark sunburst. Uh, and I couldn't see going through a thousand dollar refret. Or anything like that. Because the guy said, uh, neck reset means refret. And I just wasn't feeling that one, even if the condition was immaculate. You know, mine didn't have the neck reset. And ultimately, you're, you're talking about a 60-year-old box, and that's what I realized with these guitars. That's what I realized with these vintage instruments, is you're talking about 60, 70, sometimes older, year-old box. You know, and it's going to require some type of maintenance. <laughs> um, you know, mine had a really, really nice looking fretboard. It, it almost seems like, to me, what I was drawn to on it was it's, it, it looks like it has some choice woods on it. Just like sometimes Gibson will use choice woods. This is just me speculating, but. Certain colors, like for example, the one from Sam Ash had the ugliest back on it. And you might think, oh, no one's going to see the back, but it bothered me. It was all like this. It's just, uh, just ugly. Just ugly. And uh, otherwise, it looked bland. Um. And I didn't want the rosewood burst. I wanted that tobacco sunburst. So that was important too. Because there was one or two that had the rosewood burst in it. So ultimately I'm happy with it. And the other thing I want to say real quick before I end this. 